we now move to the prerogatives of management. These are some of the prerogatives of management to choose whom to hire, promote employees, transfer employees, change work schedule, reorganize, abolish positions, abolish a department, reduce personnel, close down its business, promulgate company policies, rules and regulations. Let us first discuss the prerogative to choose whom to hire. Now, it is within the exercise of this right that employers may fix or set a probationary period to test the conduct of the employees before hiring them permanently. But the prerogative to choose whom to hire is limited by the Anti-Age Discrimination in Employment Act, which forbids employers from placing a job advertisement which suggests age preference or declining an applicant for employment simply because of age. But employers can validly set limitations when it is a bona fide occupational qualification. When we say bona fide occupational qualification, it refers to the standard by which employers are allowed to consider in making decisions about hiring or retention of employees. For example, an airline company may prescribe the maximum weight of its flight attendants or the retirement age of its pilots. Next is the prerogative to transfer employees. An employer is free to move its employees in various areas of its business operation, or from one position to another, or from one location to another. And employees who refuse to be transferred can be validly dismissed on the ground of willful disobedience. Personal inconvenience or hardship is not a valid reason to disobey an order of transfer and invoke constructive dismissal as a pretense. The prerogative to change work schedule. An employer can change the work schedule of its employees whenever the exigencies of service so require. In the case of Sim Darby, the employer changed the working hours from 7.45 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. with 30-minute compensable lunch break. The working hours was changed to 7.45 to 4.45 with one hour non-compensable lunch break. The Supreme Court upheld the validity of the change as a valid exercise of managerial prerogative. Prerogative to promulgate company personal policies. Sometimes some employers have a so-called no-spouse employment policy. Now, is a no-spouse employment policy valid? But a company policy which prohibits its employees from marrying employees of a competitor is valid. Why? Because employers have the right to guard their trade secrets, manufacturing formulas, and marketing strategies, and other confidential programs. What is sought to be avoided is conflict of interest that may arise out of the relationship. Another policy is the anti-nepotism employment policy. The validity of an employment policy which prohibits spouses from working for the same company should be tested along the reasonable business necessity rule, which means that the employer must prove that the policy is founded on business necessity and not just on the general perception that spouses in the same workplace might affect the business. So it must be shown how the marriage could be detrimental to the business operation and not on the mere fear that employees married to each other will be less efficient. The case of Cruz versus One Network Bank is illustrative. Catherine was employed as accounting specialist. Angelo, her co-worker, was employed as loan specialist. Now, the bank has an exogamy policy, which states that when two employees working for one network bank are subsequently married, one must terminate employment immediately after marriage. So later, Catherine married uh, Angelo. Now, in consonance with the exogamy policy, the bank terminated Catherine's employment. So the issue here is whether the bank's exogamy policy as applied to Catherine is valid. The Supreme Court ruled that the exogamy policy as applied to Catherine is not valid because the bank failed to demonstrate the reasonable business necessity for its no-spouse employment policy. 
the mere fear of the possibility that spouses may divulge to each other information with respect to clients' accounts is speculative and imaginary. Another policy that employers promulgate is the non-compete employment policy. Employment contracts which prohibit employees from engaging in a business or employment competitive with that of their employer after the term of their employment for a given period is valid and will not be considered in restraint of trade if the restraint imposed is not greater than what is necessary to afford protection to the employer. And the contract provides for a limitation upon either time or place. Now, it must be noted that the non-compete agreement is reasonable and necessary if it is imposed against employees who have an insight into the general scope and details of the employer's business. So, it is but natural for employers to keep their trade secrets from falling into the hands of competitors. The case of Tube versus Platinum is illustrative. Tew was employed as Senior Assistant Vice President. Her contract of employment prohibited her from getting involved with any corporation or entity engaged in the same line of business for a period of two years. Otherwise, she will be liable to 100,000 liquidated damages. Now, within the two-year period, Tew transferred to a competitor, same line of business, where she worked as Vice President for sales. So, Platinum Plans sued Tew for damages for violating the non-compete agreement. Tew argued that the non-involvement clause was unenforceable being contrary to public order and public policy. Now, so the issue here is whether the non-involvement clause in the contract is valid. And the Supreme Court ruled that the non-involvement clause is valid because it has a time limit, two years from the time of severance of employment. It is also limited as to trade because it prohibits you from engaging in any business similar to the business of platinum plants.